CataractCoach.com. Case 174 shows good progress. This beginning surgeon is on the right path for learning. Good job here. Let's see what we can improve. All right, let's watch the video here. You've got some prep here. Looks like surgeon sitting superiorly. Pretty, pretty good draping. Starting off with the main incision first. Okay. There you go. The main incision being made. Hitting the limbal vessels a little bit. A little bit of an anesthetic agent, perhaps. Some tripen blue dye. Yes, of course, we spent the video up here. Now, going inside here. Let that dye work for a little bit. I like that idea. Wash it out. And now let's see the viscoelastic going inside the eye. Okay, pretty good. A few bubbles in there. No big deal. Let's see the rexus. Forceps only. For case 174, that's a good idea. I like that you're doing it with just forceps. Nice technique here. You got the forceps that are marked off as well. Look at that pivoting. Pivoting is perfect here. That's what you want to do. Look, not hitting the side of the incisions, pivoting in the incision, getting a nice, good size rexus. Five, five and a half millimeters is our goal. No baby rexus. I like it. It's a nice looking rexus. Now, here we go. There's the peritonesis. And let's take a look here. A little hydro dissection, perhaps. And will the nucleus spin? I'm going to watch the video here for the first time with you. So, okay. Good hydro dissection, maybe. A little bit of spin. Squirt the cornea. Okay. Let's see the a little more viscoelastic, perhaps. Just okay. Kind of creating some gaps there. Maybe you're going to chop it in the bag. A lot. Of, that's a trick that some surgeons use. We're learning to fake a chop. If you're going to do a horizontal chop to kind of lift up the intercapsular rim with a little viscoelastic, so it's a little bit easier to get your chopper in there in the correct plane. Oh, CTR. Maybe I was wrong. Starting off with a CTR in the eye. All right. That's why you want to lift the lens capsule up. Placing a CTR with some forceps here. Again, make sure that thing winds around appropriately. Get it going around nicely. And start to deliver that CTR. Nice and easy all the way around. Good guiding technique here with the left hand forceps in the right. All right, CTR at the beginning of the case. You can certainly do that. It'll certainly help. Make sure that's completely in the capsule bag. That looks pretty good. Now, there we go. So I was going to say, set up the camera there. And now let's see what we got here. Going in with a fake probe. Okay. And... Now, the chopper on the left hand looks like a vertical chopper, kind of a sharp chopper tip there. Let's see the technique here. Buzz into the nucleus and sharp chopper. Yeah, poke it in like a vertical chop, slightly combo chop. Good job. Get those pieces separated, though. Another vertical chop looks good. Another vertical chop. I don't know if they propagated through all the way, though. So, again, chop again. Make sure those pieces separate and propagate through. You're doing, obviously, a lots of chops here, which I like. Good technique. Pretty good. Get that eye back in primary a little bit. See the light reflexes? Where are the light reflexes? Yeah, near the limbus. We want them in the center of the cornea. So if you keep the eye in primary, those light reflexes will be in the center there. And if you're a resident, you better be watching retinarounds.com. That's our sister channel. So much great material. If you're a resident, you have to learn the retina stuff as well. Go to retinarounds.com and thank me later. Thank you very much. Now, going back to this case here. Now getting the nuclear pieces out, it's pretty good. A little bit of chemosis there from that incision. See how the cons all ballooned up? So you got a little chemos there coming out of the eye. Maybe cut down the cons a little bit. You can make a few radial cuts in the cons there and help release some of that trapped BSS. All right, maybe not. Although that happens if you don't, though, you're floating underwater here. So buzz in and chop and then buzz again, chop and buzz again. Yeah, oh, I like it. Nuka's coming down nicely. But see, now look at the conjunctiva. See the chemosis there? Pretty soon you're going to start pooling water on top of the corner. You're going to lose your view. That's too much chemosis. I would stop already and do a little bit of a conj cut down and treat the chemosis. There's too much chemosis right now. So see how the conj is all ballooned up? It's kind of blocking some of your view now. Yep. You need to, come, you need to cut the conj down. Eee, don't do high-risk maneuvers. Come out of the eye. Let's see what we do. Okay, visco last, but let's, can we fix the conj? Or are you just going to roll with it? All right, lights off. Probably you're going to roll with it. Lights off, probably loading up a lens. And then let's see what we got here. And all right, eye probe going inside the eye. Why? Oh, cortex removal. Yeah, we forgot about that. I'm getting too ahead of myself. So cortex removal is a little bit more challenging with the CTR in the eye. Not sure why I needed the CTR so early in the case. Generally, I like to put the CTR as late as possible. If you need it, obviously use it, but I like to put it as late as possible. All right, now the bag's cleaned up. That's not a lot. Of, now, see, now you're underwater. See that? All that water there? You've got so much chemosis, it's creating a pool. The chemosis is the walls, and then the cornea is the floor of the pool. There we go. Now we're cutting the conjure down. Do a couple more of those, and then, yeah, just get that conge decompressed. There we go. Using the back end, looks like a Voexel sponge. Get some of that fluid out. Yeah, much better. You definitely want to do that. You'll lose your view otherwise. Now let's see the lens going in. Looks like a um, single piece of acrylic. 
What well, does that happen to go? Hold on, hold on. I can already see all those bubbles. Yeah, it looks. Yeah, that looks like it's going upside down. No, that's upside down. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. What you, what's the? If it looks like an S, S is stupid. We don't want that. I think it's upside down, buddy. Maybe hey, you agreed with me. Now you're flipping back up. So listen, at one seventy four, you've got reasonable skills. You should not be putting in upside down eye wells at one hundred seventy four cases in. That's just kind of not excusable. You slow down a little bit. Take your time. You should have noticed the lens was going in upside down and fix that issue as it's being injected. You better be saying to yourself for the rest of your life, 7L rule. As the leading happy goes in, 777, trailing happy, LLL. I'm glad you caught it. You were able to flip it upside down. But sometimes, remember, flipping in the eye is a dangerous thing too. Eh, you did pretty good. You got a lot to learn. Please leave your comments below. Let's help this young doctor become a better surgeon. And submit your video on cataractcoach.com. Click on the links and follow the directions exactly.